Okay, welcome to the webinar, Bitrix 24, Self-Hosted Advantages. So who are we? I am Damien Edwards, Business Development Manager of Interface, and with me I have Andy Naylor, our Projects Manager. Hi guys, if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, uh, please put them in the box provided, and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So we're located in Sheffield in the UK and New York. We manage all your pre-sale support. So we can provide a demo for you, we can answer any questions about which solution is going to be right for you. Provide full implementation service, including customization and training. Uh, if you choose the self-hosted option, we're able to provide a hosting solution for you. And we provide a premium ongoing support package. So what is Bitrix24? A suite of more than 35 tools to manage your business. Currently a, a million businesses using Bitrix24. Available on the cloud and the self-hosted solution. And it's self-hosted we're going to be talking about today. Prices for self-hosted from a, a one-off of just under $5,000. Self-hosted is available in two versions. BizPace is our most popular and a suitable solution for most businesses. Enterprise is the most advanced product, allows a company to establish an unlimited number of intranets, which can be all managed by a single global administrator. So for example, a company who operates in multiple countries may want individual sites with different languages. So what are the benefits of self-hosted? One of the main benefits is the ability to customize the platform. Uh, BizPace and Enterprise Solutions are full content management systems which can be customized extensively. Branding, including specially designed login pages, logos within the site, and also some scope to customize the colors of the theme. Control panel. The control panel is an area for administrators to make changes to modules. Uh, modules can be configured in extremely advanced ways within the control panel. If you, and if you're currently a Bitrix Cloud user, then I think you'd be extremely impressed with the additional functionality available within the control panel. There's full access to source code. So this means if the customization you want cannot be configured within the control panel, it's usually possible to do this directly in the code. Um, Bitrix is built on its own framework in PHP, so changing source code should only be attempted if you have experience of PHP as well as very good understanding of the Bitrix platform itself. Uh, sort of thing a partner can do for you. Integration uh, and APIs available on self-hosted solutions. This allows you to integrate with thousands of other web applications. So this is a full API, very different to the uh, API that's available on the cloud allows you to integrate any modules within Bitrix and partners can help with this type of integration. And finally, self-hosted solutions have a number of extra features not found on the cloud such as uh, help desk, e-learning and analytics. So now let's look, have a look at some of the benefits in a little bit more detail. One of the main reasons for choosing self-hosted would be the ability to customize the look and feel of the intranet. The site can be customized to match your corporate look and functionality can be configured to make using the system more intuitive for you. Styling, many areas can be branded and we'll have a look at an example of this in a moment. Uh, editing pages, any page can be edited and administrators can create custom pages using the page editor wizard, we'll look at that also. Navigation, so to improve the user experience and save time navigating between modules, the links in the menu, uh, links within the menus are fully editable and it's actually possible to create different uh, navigation items and display those to different sets of users. It's possible to create custom dashboards to display different sets of data on a page, e.g. a sales or a projects dashboard. 
and customer portals uh, available both in the cloud and self-hosted but with the self-hosted you get the flexibility to create uh, fully custom page layouts and fully branded customer portals. So let's have a look at a uh, branded login page firstly so if uh, if you've used a cloud version you'll know that uh, from the login page it's a Bitrix branded product uh, with the self-hosted you can do really what you want with the with the login page in this example we've got a logo over here a bit about a uh, bit about the organization here and uh, got some contact information down here and then we can we can log in. So as I say, you can do what you want with that. It can be a static page, it can be a page with video, etc., etc. Okay. So now we're going to look at how, within the self-hosted version, you can create custom custom pages. So Andy's going to create as a uh, a custom page, and I think we're going to add a, a link in the menu so users can navigate to this. Okay. Uh, so this is the self-hosted platform as Damien's gone through. Uh, if you've been using the cloud, you may notice uh, a couple of differences, uh, primarily the top control panel bar here. So this is what you get with the self-hosted package. And you can see here that if I just open this up, you can have the ability to create new pages uh, and edit the pages, which we're going to go into uh, a little bit later. And you can also change things such as the, the, the structure and the, uh, the menu down the left-hand side. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to add a page, and we're going to add a page to the services section here. So if we add a page to the services section, we're also going to add a menu item as well within this section. So if we scroll back to the top, and then we go to the control panel, we're going to create this page within the control panel. So we just click here. So now this is the uh, the, like the, the back end section of uh, the self-hosted package. And in this case, we're going to click in content uh, and then files and folders. So as Jamie mentioned uh, earlier in the webinar, he just mentioned that you, are, you do have full access to the source code. Uh, and this is, this is where you would locate it here. Now, if you wanted to on the self-hosted package, whether a partner hosted it for you or you hosted it yourself, we would probably recommend to get FTP access so you could edit the files, uh, you could edit the files there. So what we're going to do, like I mentioned before, we're going to add a page to the services section. So if I click into the services folder here, and then it's a simple case of clicking on the add button and then adding a file. So you can see here, this is the, uh, got an editor tool that allows you to format your text. Uh, and we're going to add, add a page title. So if we add a uh, staff party, what's the name? And then this here, you can see it's automatically named the uh, the file. Now you can change this if you'd like. If you didn't want it to be called staff party, uh, the file name, you can actually change that. And this will form part of the URL, is that right? Staff party. That's yes. So that links to that's it. exactly it. Yes. Okay. So if we copy that, and then again, you can add as much text here as you want. What we're going to do, we're going to edit this page on the front end of the site, just to show you what the, the self-hosted site is capable of. So if we just click on save, so that page has been now been added, and now what we need to do is add it to the left-hand me menu within this services section. So if we click here and then click on menu edit. And then if we just switch to simple mode for the moment, and you can see here down the left hand side, this is all the links that are available uh, within the services section. So what we need to do now, so you can see there, that was the file that, that we named, and it just needs to be in the services directory, which, which is what you're in. And that's the name of the link itself. So if we click on save, and then if we jump back to the uh, front end site, and then if we scroll down, you can see here that this, this link has now been added to the, uh, to the services section. So we click on here, 
you can see it's just a plain text page with the content that was on uh, the page that we edited in the, the control panel. So now what we're going to do is just going to show you how to edit the page via the front end. So if we click on edit page, and then you can see here again, you've got the same style editor tool. Now, if you did want to edit uh, the page in PHP, I mean, you can, you can do that here just by flicking, you know, just flicking the view here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is going to add a component, and we, you can see here on the right-hand side, we've got a content, and then because Bitrix is made up of a range of different components here, you can actually use things such as Google Maps, or you can drag in maybe uh, other elements such as CRM items or, or photo galleries. You've got quite a lot of it. You've got quite a lot of. Uh, different tools. So what we're going to do here is going to add a media player and then just drag it into the top. So the parameters pop up appears here and we can add in a whole range of different parameters such as uh, the width and height of the video player. And first of all what we need to do is we need to find the, the video itself. So if we click into videos And then what we'll do, we will click on Bitrix24. Uh, the actual media player itself accepts all the uh, the common video tools. So if I click on open here, and then if it's just make just double check to make sure you can see here that this is now stored in here. So if you click on save, and then save again. You can see here that this, the, the, the component has now been edited, and you can see the video plays. Okay, great. So we've um, we created a new page within the control panel. We added some very basic default text content in 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 there, and then we, we created a menu item so that users can navigate to that. And, and then we went from the front end using the, the using the page editor wizard to show you how you can add content doing that. So there's two ways. We showed you both. You can do it just in, just with using one of those ways uh, to add. Uh, so that content we added using the editor wizard could have been added uh, within within the control within the control panel. Uh, so if we can just have a look at Andy how uh, we can now set some permissions on that link. So we, as, it, as it stands, I think anyone can navigate to this page. Can we create some permissions for, say, a set of users, say an HR department or a particular department or something? Yeah. Uh, so if we go back into the control panel, um, we go. We are still in the uh, the files and folders section and within the services section. So if we just scroll back to the menu and click on menu edit, and then all you do is click on advanced mode, and you can see all the the menu items here. And then you can see the one that we recently added. So what you can do here is you can uh, click on condition type and then actually spec specify, uh, as Debbie mentioned, maybe for the HR department. So what that means is uh, that anyone in the HR department will get access to this page uh, menu item. Uh, and anybody that's not in the HR department will not be able to see this. So so what that actually does is create a quite a, a dynamic experience for the user. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can restrict quite a lot of areas doing this. And this is pulled from the um, uh, organization chart, the company structure. Yes, that's yeah. correct. So yes. you, you change anything in the company structure, you move someone from one department to another, and their permissions will automatically follow follow through. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and, and on the self-hosted, you can create uh, multiple uh, user groups as well. Mm -hmm. So you can you can specify this. This is where the menu uh, access permissions go okay. from here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look at um, the portal. So another area that we mentioned was the uh, ability to create a custom uh, branded port portal area. So 
Um, what you'll see, so this is on firstly it's hosted on a separate separate domain. You know you can host this on a totally different totally different different domain. It's essentially a, a different different site to your your internal site. Uh, we can add a logo in over here. Uh, you'll see that in this instance that the top top admin panel is very similar. Of course, this, this admin bar right across the top is for administrators. That's not going to be visible to any of our external users. Um, one of the main things, the main differences you'll notice on this, this site is the banners on the right-hand side. Now, these are custom banners. Um, um, you can create any any banners on, on this right-hand column, so you don't need to stick with the standard Bitrix component parts, um, particularly, if you, particularly if you're inviting in, uh, customers into this area, you might want to often make some promotions to them in this, this right-hand side area. Uh, the main body of the site is an activity stream similar to the to the main site. And of course, these extranet users see uh, content that's related to their work only. And then on, on the left-hand side, the menu items. So it's, it's, it's obviously we've got a lot less content on, on this side of the site, which we're displaying to these users uh, within, the, within the My Workspace area. In this example, we've got, you know, we can create, we can create simple text content. We can create things like the, things like video content, and then we can link out to things like tasks uh, and document drives as well uh, within this within this area. Uh, also within here, we've got links to support tickets. We can have a look at in a minute, and then we have links out to. You might want to link out to your uh, the guy who's the account manager for your customer within this within this portal area. And as a as a customer, I can log in. I can review. A bit about my account manager, and we can communicate using the messenger tool uh, within within the portal. Yeah, I think there's a couple of important things to note on the using the uh, extranet as a, maybe a client portal like we have here. Is that uh, you saw a login screen uh, earlier with uh, your intranet side of things? You can actually have a separate login uh, design for you to, for your clients to see, so you can design that up. And then secondly, I think one of the most important things with self-hosted is that you do have uh, an unlimited user uh, license for extranet users. Uh, and what that, what that allows you to do is quite important to note that the extranet users can't access anything to do with your internet side of things, so they can't access any CRM items of yours. So they are pretty restricted to what they can see within this client portal. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you're in control of what, what they can and can't see. But uh, yeah, as Andy said, Extranet users do have access, uh, if given the right permissions, to quite a lot of the standard functionality. The, the two main areas that, as an Extranet user, you can't grant access to will be the CRM and the HR tools like leave request and expenses, etc. Okay, so so we looked at a couple of the different custom, uh, custom different areas where you can customize the site. Let's have a look at some of the uh, advanced features available within the self-hosted. So uh, all those features currently available on the standard and professional cloud solutions are available within the self-hosted with a number of extra ones, uh, including help desk. So this is a tool to allow you to manage uh, customer support inquiries, customers log their inquiries within a portal area, and uh, help desk staff um, process the tickets according to predefined rules. We're going to have a little look at that. Uh, E-learning is a set of tools to assist in the training of employees. Courses can be created and staff members can be set tasks to demonstrate their knowledge in a particular subject area. Uh, business processes, so these are used to manage things such as staff leave, sales and projects workflow, etc. Uh, essentially a range of tools to automate administration within a business. So business processes available on both the cloud and self-hosted, but with the self-hosted it's possible to run business processes on, on any entity, there's, there's no restrictions, so any of the modules have a business process capability. 
uh, analytics uh, essential to really to understand the success of an intranet project will be a good analytics package and we'll have a quick look at that as well so so these are some of the additional features available within the self-hosted others others exist too and many of the solutions you're currently using on other platforms can be can be potentially developed by a partner on the Bitrix platform. So let's have a look at some of these custom modules. So we're back in the uh, portal area, we can have a look at the help desk. So again, a view from the, the, the customer's point of view, I can see uh, all my tickets and I can log in to, to, to manage these tickets or we can create a new ticket new ticket up here. So let's have a look at one of these. Okay, so I can see details of my ticket and I can add content to that to that ticket. Um, let's have a look within the let's have a look within the control panel help desk. And so uh, within the portal area, this is where the customer can access their tickets and create new tickets. Uh, internally, you'll have a support, a support team who will access tickets within the control panel. You can see a page like this. Uh, these users can create their own filters at the top here, so they can look at on hold or due tickets or overdue tickets. Uh, and it's possible to create your own set of buttons up here. When I click on here, I can define the the filter items that I use to display the, 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 the tickets within that within that particular filter. And a user can help this user can access this ticket and provide their response. It's possible to create things like frequently used answers. A lot of tickets that come in would have the same kind of kind of request or issue, so you can set those frequently used answers up. And we can uh, choose to assign tickets on to more suitable support agent. Um, time's being tracked here, so the time I have a ticket open for is being tracked and we can report on that at any point. Uh, so it's here that the ticket will be closed after seven days. Um, we can also set things like priorities, um, so I can set this manually. Um, you can create different service level agreements, so dependent on maybe the type of issue or, or the, the particular customer that's raised the issue, they might have different service levels and that might include response times to tickets. So uh, particular premium customers might have a quicker response. Um, we can also define, uh, we can also create a process which would uh, assign a ticket to uh, different users depending on the content of the ticket, actually what items the, the users selected in, in the ticket creation. I think one of the one of, one of the useful things with the self-hosted as well, if you are going to be using the, the help desk, is that we can actually create uh, a mailbox, mailbox rule. So what that means is that we could have, uh, for example, support at uh, intraface.com. If you were to email support at intraface.com, then that would generate a ticket. And you can actually, like David mentioned just a minute ago, you can actually get that to be specifically assigned to uh, a member of the help desk team based on what category that they were emailing around and things like yeah. that. Okay, so if you had a, so different an email from different users, one email from one user could be assigned to one particular agent, an email from a different user could be assigned to a different agent. Yeah, so absolutely. So Bitrix, though Bitrix doesn't include, Bitrix self-hosted doesn't include a an email client as such inbox and outbox it it, uh, it is possible to do a lot of integration th through email so you can duplicate the email boxes you have in your in outlook within bitrix and then you can run rules and uh, yeah sandy said a very common rule would be to generate a ticket from an incoming email but there's other things there's other things you can do from incoming emails and that's one of the one of the advantages of a self-hosted self-hosted solution Okay, let's have a look uh, at analytics. So analytics allows you to see uh, key information on users' activities. It's really good to see which areas of the system are popular, which maybe are not so popular, and it gives you a full log of all, all the activities um, by user, uh, by date, and by module also allows you to see IP address that a user's logged in 
uh, from. Again, we can create a filter using any of the any of the uh, fields up here to, to to drill down further into this data. But essentially, if an action's been performed within the Bitrix self-hosted version, then it's recorded and can be reported on. Uh, there are some other interesting uses. Uh, so we've got a customer who uses uh, this IP address here to monitor consultants' time at a client site. So we built a dashboard around this, which allowed them to see where their consultants were at any time during a during a working day. Yeah, I think that just illustrates the fact that with the self-hosted version, you do have access to all the data that uh, goes into the system. So as we've mentioned before, you can actually uh, pull that data out and create maybe data dashboards, and you can display them in the office and things like that. So. Uh, yeah, so it, with the self-hosted, you do have access to all the data that goes in. Uh, and another important thing to note on a, on a side note is that all that data is is can be uh, backed up as well. So, so if a partner would back that up very regularly, yeah. uh, such as ourselves, but there is also a backup tool yeah. within the uh, control panel of Bitrix. Yeah, of course, and we, 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 we're not touching on all the benefits here. There are, uh, when, uh, when we talk about data and backing up, obviously with the self-hosted, you choose where your data resides. So if you want that in your office, then you host it on a machine in your office. Uh, if you want it on a server, you need to know where that server is located geographically, you know, which country it's located in, then you, know, you have full control of that. And your choice is for uh, you to rent a server space and uh, ask a partner to install the site for you, or for a partner to provide the whole hosting solution for you. And we, we can do either, so that's your, your choice. Um, okay. So we looked at uh, some customizations, um, some advanced features, and then the third, really the third area would be the ability to create uh, tighter integrations with your other systems. Um, uh, beginning with forms, uh, you can build forms on public facing websites and bring the information into Bitrix. For example, an inquiry form could automatically create say a post, an activity stream, or a task. Um, it's possible to create some integration with the cloud and web forms, but they're a bit limited on what they can generate within. within yeah, Bitrix. I think with the cloud, I think you've got the uh, the REST API with the cloud, but you are very limited in what you can do in terms of you can create, a, a generate a lead, which is quite useful from a web form especially. Uh, but like, like they mentioned, with the self-hosted, you can, have a you have a lot more flexibility uh, to, to to generate things such as you can trigger business processes off and that can then lead to posting maybe on activity streams creating contacts companies etc you, you have got quite a wide variety of what you can do especially with the web forms okay uh, so a second f form of integration would be emails self-hosted allows you to f fully sync incoming emails into the CRM with a with a custom process um, uh, Email rules can be configured to create, also email rules can be configured to create items such as, uh, or any item really, but uh, items including work groups and, and tasks. So uh, with a with a custom rule, really anything can be created from an incoming, incoming email. Yeah, we, I mean, we've, we've created uh, an extension for the email sync, uh, which is, you can find that on our uh, online store, uh, on, our, on our website, interface.com. And that creates quite a, just a complex integration between uh, emails coming into the system and syncing them to uh, individual CRM contacts. Yeah, and I think that's at the moment is free of charge. So if you're a self-hosted user, you can order that free of charge on, online. We'll help you install it, um, but uh, essentially it will install itself uh, within the system. We provide some instructions on how it works. So thirdly, uh, the form of integration is APIs. Bitrix includes um, uh, an API which would allow you to integrate with you know, any other web services, compatible web service. Uh, ones we've worked with include uh, Xero, MailChimp, Trello, and a number of e-commerce packages. Yeah, I think the, I mean, especially the e-commerce one is quite popular. Uh, you can, once say, for example, uh, WooCommerce or Magento, if an order is strict received, you can actually uh, sync that up with your maybe your deals within your CRM to create a new deal when an order is received on your website 
and also uh, it can create a new contact in a company so you're always storing that data it's, it is really useful mm -hmm. and, and finally databases because with a self-hosted solution you have full access to all the files and databases it is possible to create integrations uh, by pulling information, the direct information directly from the database. So it would be possible, for example, uh, to show opportunities that exist within the Bitrix CRM or maybe an external dashboard application. Yeah, I mean, in terms of that, you may want to connect it to uh, one of the tools on Zapier, for example. So you could do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So what are your hosting options? You have a choice to host in-house or use a partner's hosting service. For self-hosted, we provide a virtual appliance, so which is a free application provided by Bitrix. It uh, allows you to run the, the instance in a, a pre-configured environment. It saves you time on installation, maintenance, et cetera, and can improve you know, overall performance of the system. Alternatively, alternatively, Bitrix can be hosted and managed by a partner, and this is what we would class as a, a private cloud. Uh, many um, some of the benefits of, of this option include the server performance is, is managed by the partner, um, servers optimized for, for speed, partners ensure your data is secure and backed up, and it's, it's possible to scale projects without investing in, in further hardware. So essentially partners are specialists in managing servers, partner hosting can save you time and provide considerable peace of mind. A uh, typical cost for hosting would be around $1,500 uh, per annum. So pricing for self-hosted, so this is uh, starting from for BizPace is just under $5,000. This is a, a one-off lifetime uh, fee. You own the product outright. Um, we do recommend, though, that uh, on an annual basis you you buy updates. So the, the initial license includes updates for the first 12 months. Uh, if you want to take updates after that period, then they're at uh, just over $1,000 per annum. This gives you obviously bug fixes, but it also gives you all new feature rollouts. Other things you should consider would be partner hosting, as we mentioned, um, approximately 1500 a year. Do you need any customizations to the site that you're not going to be able to do uh, in-house? Uh, partners can do that for you, but would be potentially chargeable. Do you need to integrate with any, any other systems and do you need to get a quote to do that from a partner? Uh, very important for self-hosted would be training. There's a lot of other, there's, it, uh, there's a lot of extra uh, administrator tools within the self-hosted. It's very different to the, to the cloud, which is essentially a self-service. Uh, application and then partners can provide premium support so we at interface provide telephone support and um, very convenient for customers to be able to ring up and ask questions and get immediate answers to those so in summary uh, advantages of self-hosted would be the ability to customize uh, really any aspects of the system uh, how that how it functions, but also how it looks. Um, full integration with any module within Bitrix and any other service that has an API, and some of the advanced features that we looked at. So uh, we do a webinar every uh, Monday at the same time. Um, if you go to our website, intraface.com slash webinars, then you can register there. Uh, coming soon, we have uh, CRM and sales automation, uh, project management, uh, HR webinar, and one focus just on business processes, which uh, you know, most of these webinars apply to both self-hosted and cloud solutions. That's it. If you've got any questions, um, we have some time to answer those. If you want to post those, um, post them in the chat window. We'll, we'll go through those now. Can Bitrix, so here's some questions, can Bitrix be integrated with RingCentral? Um, well, it's not something I've heard of, 
but um, if it has a um, suitable API, then it can be integrated, and you should speak to ourselves or a partner who can investigate that for you. Um, our contact details are on the screen there, so if you want to send over some details, we'll, we'll look into that for you. Uh, can Bitrix be integrated with Google Apps for Work? Yeah, indeed. I mean, there's already some built-in integration with Google Drive on both cloud and self-hosted, but if you wanted to build some further integration, then self-hosted will be the right solution for that. So I've got a question here about um, Extranet users, can they add data or only view? Well, um, Extranet users have um, have a, have uh, all the have access to all the functionality that main users have, with the exception of CRM and HR tools. But it depends on what permission levels you give to those Extranet users, so you can then further restrict their their, their permissions. So you could allow them to add data, but you could also restrict them to view only. Yeah, I think a common use with the Extranet users is uh, you would create an Extranet workgroup, invite them into the workgroup, so you can collaborate together with your client. Uh, but in a workgroup, as David mentioned, you do have quite a lot of functionality there. So you've got the tasks module within the workgroup, you've got uh, the drive within the workgroup. You've also got things like calendars, uh, photo albums, and uh, there's like a forum on there as well. So they do have quite a lot of uh, they do have quite a lot of uh, tools to use within within the extranet. Mm -hmm. So, and it, and it, like I say, it's a common use for them for collaborating with your clients externally. Yeah, I think we've got a, a, a comparison. We've got comparison on our website. I think if it's not on there, we can send it to you. It shows you exactly feature by feature what's available to two sets of users. So, I think we mentioned earlier, extranet users. There's there's no charge for those um, with intranet users you pay pricing slightly different so you pay a one-off fee and that includes the first 25 users and then you need to buy users individually after that uh, extranet users are free so in some some situations um, extranet users some internal people could be could log in as extranet users and that might work for your for your business well, can I have the hosting be done with my data center service provider? Yep, yeah, you can host uh, the self-hosted version yourself, uh, absolutely. There are quite a lot of uh, installation, ad it, there's quite a lot of insta installation advice on the uh, Bitrix website. Uh, so it's best to probably head there, I think it's bitrix24.com slash support. Uh, and then if you just look at the self-hosted solution there, it will give you some guides on there of of the, the software that you could software and hardware that you, that is required okay uh, what videos would you suggest for a new user to get started well is there's um uh quite a lot of videos on uh, youtube.com slash bitrix24 or youtube.com our own channel uh, interface and um we're adding quite a lot of kind of uh uh a guide on how to get started soon so I think if you go to either of those you'll start to see some more quite a lot of new guides being added onto those yeah I think as well like David mentioned earlier we've got a webinar every Monday uh, that focuses on different aspects of the uh, Bitrix system whether they're both on the cloud and the self-hosted so if you tune in every Monday uh, you can get some mm -hmm. get some advice on each one of those as well yeah um, does self-hosted work on the mobile app? Yeah, indeed. So uh, it works exactly the same way as the cloud. You you access your site through a browser, or you can access it through uh, an app. And we have apps for um, uh, Android and iPhone. So exact exactly the same way. Um, even if you're hosting it in-house, you provide if you provide web access to your server, then users will be able to access it outside. Uh, of your uh, your uh, office area, um, yeah. The only difference I think, uh, anything to consider is that the app uh, is a Bitrix app, and uh, we talked a bit about branding, um, removing the Bitrix branding and adding your own branding. That's not possible on the standard Bitrix app. Uh, it is a Bitrix a Bitrix product and Bitrix branded and can't be customized. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, say go to our website, interface.com slash webinars, 
um, register for register for any other for, for any webinars. We do the we do a webinar at the same time, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time Monday. Thanks for your time. Bye bye. Okay, thank you.